Well, watching that was John Longworth, who is the former head of the British Chambers of Commerce, and he's now chairman of Leave Means Leave, which campaigns for what they call a swift and clean exit from the EU. And also here in the studio is Dinesh Damija, who founded the firm eBookers and who supports the group Open Britain, who want to remain inside the EU's single market. Good morning to you Good both. Morning gentlemen. John Longworth, if I can turn to you first, there's been a lot of political talk about the possibility of no deal. Is it time business started preparing for no deal? Yeah, absolutely, and businesses of course are preparing. Certainly the entrepreneurs and business owners in our Leave Me's Leave network are already looking for the opportunities. There's a big misunderstanding. Sorry, about looking for the opportunities. You think that leaving with no deal would be a good deal? Uh, leaving with no deal is certainly better than a bad deal and could be the best deal. I mean, certainly the very best deal is to have all the freedoms of leaving the EU and a free trade arrangement as well. But the chances of retaining the free trade arrangement seem to be becoming slimmer and slimmer. And actually, the FTA is not worth as much as the advantages of leaving. So what we now need to do, it's essential that the Prime Minister does this very soon, is to declare that we are actually going to go to World Trade Organization rules in March 2019 if there's no progress with respect to the EU. You don't, you don't this want next the week. transition or implementation period that she's talked about. You think it should just be a, a sharp cutoff in March 19, what someone would call a cliff edge yeah, Brexit? There's a huge misunderstanding about the advantages and disadvantages of leaving the EU. All the advantages and all the benefits that will boost our economy are entirely in the hands of the UK government, provided we leave the single market and the customs union. So leaving in March 2019 holds no problems for businesses in our network because they will seize those opportunities and the government should be preparing to seize them too. Dinesh Dimitri, do you fear that businesses should be preparing for a no-deal scenario? Now it's not what you want, but is it something you have to think about? I really fear it. I think that it'll be a disaster for business. Um, I know uh, I'm here for the single market. I'm here for free movement of people. And I'm here for a vote on the deal. Because I think it's going to be a disaster. If By a vote on the deal, on. you mean a second referendum, a public vote on the deal? A second referendum on the deal. But it's a first referendum, not a second referendum. Because we didn't know what we were voting for the last time. So you say you want to keep all of the advantages of the single market and of free movement. That's not what the UK government is going to negotiate for. Can you see a potential outcome if you look at what in your mind would be the most optimistic scenarios that cabinet ministers lay out that you would be happy with? I only know how to make money as a single businessman. And if I make money uh, with my view of Europe, I'm sure that everyone else will too. I, I, I really believe that I can make more sales selling to 500 million people than selling to 60. Now, John talks about WTO rules and, and these will take years. You can't go straight into WTO without negotiating each line item of, of, of products, which takes six to eight years. Which would mean that at the very least there would need to be an implementation phase even if there was, we were going to walk away with no deal, surely, John Longworth? No, well, I completely disagree with that. I think we can move to WTO very easily if, in fact, we start to talk to WTO now. And time is of the essence. There's no question about that. Barney is right when he says the clock is ticking. We need to start preparing now for what a no-deal scenario means. And it's quite irresponsible of the Chancellor to say that he will not invest in actually implementing practical measures for this because it's increasingly likely that that's what the outcome will be. But we shouldn't fear it because actually all the advantages of leaving the EU, the repatriation of the net contribution, lowering taxes, lowering regulation, uh, boosting business, reform of the CAP, reducing the cost of living for people because the, the EU taxes clothing, footwear and food, for example. All those things that will boost the economy can only take place once we've left the single market. But depend presumably on us being able to do trade deals with other countries outside of the EU, with the United States, with Japan, with China, with India. That's not going to happen before March 2019. Hillary Clinton was warning this morning, don't rest everything on a trade deal with um, Donald Trump. He doesn't like free trade. Well, I think listening to Hillary Clinton would be a big mistake. She's hardly got it right so far. I think the truth of the matter is that the trade deals are of less importance. None of the things I've just mentioned, which will boost the UK economy, depend on trade deals at all. Trade deals will be a bonus, but we can remove external tariffs unilaterally. 
And it, historically, that's exactly what the UK did in the 19th century and boosted our economy for the best part of 70 years. Dinesh Demidia, you've made your position very clear. You'd like to stay in the single market. Is it time, though, for you to start doing what John recommends and working out how you could trade under WTO rules? Well, WTO rules are not as good as the deals we have now. And we're talking about 57 to 58 deals. And we're going to go down. Now, a business needs cash flow, and not for six years, but six months they'll go down. And we're talking about small businesses and medium-sized businesses. I mean, it's cloud cuckoo land to say, OK, five to six years, and we can do this, and we can do that. There are figures on both sides. I know, as an individual, how to make money, right? I've made money, and I've made money with 300 people as a marketplace. My competitors were marketing to 60 million people. I was marketing to 300 million people, and I did quite well. 